It's still got plenty of wind. Thanks for listening. Mike is my goat. Do you fear me? Do you fear me? Hi, everybody. I'm Big Anklevich. Welcome to another episode of That Gets My Goat. We're broadcasting live from the middle of nowhere. It used to be the middle of nowhere. We, we're almost experiencing what my friend refers to as light pollution, which I thought was some horse shit thing that he'd made up. And I still, just between you and me, believe that it's something he made up. But he's like, oh, there's too many people living out here. They ruin it for everybody else. There's too much light and you can't get any sleep or fart or whatever. And I still don't believe him, but all of this used to be dark. I remember when this was farmland as far as the eye could see. And now... There's lights almost as far as the eye can see, just in this short period of time. All of this will someday be yours. Kittens! <laughs> yeah, you know, light pollution, the problem with light pollution is it just makes it hard to see the stars. Oh, is that the problem? Yeah. It's not that you can't fart when there's too much light, although there may be people that do have trouble sleeping, like you were saying, because of light pollution, although I doubt it. But yeah, I mean, you go to a big city, and... You, it's just black. You look. It doesn't no, matter. L.A. had orange skies every night. I mean, it was orange. It never got black. It was just orange. And so, yeah, you'd have to go up into the hills to see any stars or anything like that. Yeah. Apparently, somewhere around here, and it's not, like, close, like five or six or seven hours to the southeast or something like that, there is a place that is just absolutely wonderfully dark. It's, like, one of the darkest places still left around And you can go and see, you know, stars that look like the pictures that you get from, like, the Hubble telescope or whatever, where you got all the Milky Way and all the nebulas and et cetera going on in the background. Well, where I grew up, it hasn't grown or changed in my entire lifetime. And so if you drive just a mile south of town you suddenly escape where all the houses are and it just becomes farmland or sagebrush, you know. And so, yeah, it was really, really easy. You could go on your bike and suddenly, you know, be able to see everything. Although, frankly, you could see all the constellations and the Hubble telescope and stuff from the front yard. But that's... Right. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, I do remember going camping as a youth... And just being kind of amazed at how much better the stars were when you got away from all the light. But but yeah, we are... This is our second show, our second That Gets My Goat from this location. We decided... Who was it? That's, that's my goat. I think it was that alien story, the one where uh, I had done the, the Indian accent for the one character. And whoever edited it cut out all the he saids. And so it's just like, how how did we know to do that? And I was just puzzled when we listened to it. I was like, wow, we were really intuitive on that story. <laughs> but what I didn't know was that he had just decided that he said uh, are bad. Well, they're unnecessary as long as the voices are different enough and recognizable, I guess. But, uh, but okay, so that was, I believe you're talking about... That's dead in the title. Yeah, no. It was the spaceship, uh, space opera one, where... Uh, I think it may have even been one that inspired you to start thinking about doing a space opera with your your Captain Kirk uh, storyline idea that you had. Um, but, I, yeah, I can't remember what it was called. It was when they found, like, a dead spaceship, and then it had been taken over by some kind of a thing and was trying to kill them. And I yeah, think it was a good story, no? Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Who, do you remember who produced that? Was that Brian? It was somebody... And they had a really cool soundscape, and it was just like, wow, this is more ambitious than what we usually do, which is, you know, a couple of guys hanging out or whatever, because you had to create everything. Although, I guess you can find spaceship doors or spaceship thrusters or lasers or whatever it is on Freesound. I think it was Brian. I think it was one of his early... It was that long ago that it was one of his early projects, because I do remember... There was the explosion of the ship at the end, and he just left silence. Because <laughs> he's a, a scientist. Um, well, we were listening to it. You had your daughter's MP3 player, and I think you had plugged it into speakers. And on the walk up the this hill, we're on a mountain. We're on a 
Is this a mountain? What is this? I don't know. We tend to call. I, I tend to call it anyways. I think other people as well around here call it a bluff. All right. Uh, we walked up that, listening to the story, and then once we got to the top, we looked out on, and you can see a lake there to the south. And uh, I did, the moon rose while we were recording, and you could see the reflection of the full moon on the water. It's not that I remember that, but you mentioned it as we were walking up the hill, and the bluff. And any- Actually, Miracle Max calls it the Blave. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Which, as everyone knows, means the bluff. And uh, <laughs> we, uh, we recorded that episode up here. And I thought it was neat. And I can't remember if the sound quality was really crappy afterward when I edited the show. Or, but there was nothing keeping us from doing this again until today when we realized how fat we'd become. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. There was nothing keeping us from that except for our own fatness, which makes it very hard to get up the blave. Um, but yeah, it's, it's... I guess it was an episode of the regular show, then not the uh, That Gets My Goat. We did do a That Gets My Goat with this device where we just walked around. But we, I guess we didn't come up here in that one. We just walked the whole time, so yeah. that was different. Anyhow, so we walked up this hill, and we were both talking about just, oh, wow. Although you had exercised a great deal, and so you had an excuse for being like, oh, we got to stop and, and, and breathe heavily. Um, but every time we'd stop, we were farther down the bluff <laughs> than we had been. And that surprised me because uh, I don't do a lot of drugs. Yeah, it's, it's like that scene, speaking of... Uh the curtains um that scene when uh, lancelot is coming into the castle and the guards are sitting there watching him and he keeps running and they're just sitting there chewing and he's running and then they cut back to the guards and they cut back to him and he's running the same section again and each time he's running the same section and then suddenly he's there it was kind of like that except for yeah it was like we would walk and then we'd stop and we'd look up and it would be the top would be a certain distance away and then we'd walk for a while, and then we'd stop and look up. And it was the same certain distance away somehow. <sighs> but we made it. We made it. And I was uh, upset to see somebody else up here. I was like, oh, no, people are copulating, and now I'm going to be jealous. But instead, it was a guy with a flashlight, and he started walking toward us the second we got up the hill. I mean, just like immediately. And... Uh, that can only mean one thing. Well, I guess it can mean you're on gangland territory, but in our experience, it can only mean one thing. It's a policeman and you've done something wrong or he thinks you're doing something wrong. And so he came walking over and he flashed a light in our faces. So we couldn't tell that he was a kid. We just thought he was, you know, a policeman. And he says, what are you doing up here? And uh, we told him. And then he turned around and, and, and left, which was weird. But... Uh, it was weird, yeah. He, he at all. It's just a young guy. Yeah, he had driven a truck up here, which I think maybe we'll have to try next time. One of us needs to get us a truck. You got a truck that you could get, maybe? I'm not really a truck guy. I I don't know. My uncle really likes trucks, and he always asks me when I'm going to get a truck. But I, I mean, <laughs> it's just not really my thing. Maybe you could borrow his truck, and, and maybe if he has some guns we could bring with us, too, that would be good to go with our truck. Oh, shoot. You know, I don't want to offend Clay Duggar, but I, I'm not a gun person either, and I, I don't – I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool that if people like that, and, and and a truck is way better than having, like, a little geo and you're trying to ride it up a hill. <laughs> but it's just uh, – That's true. Oh, I, I want to mention that we are in the path of the airport, and so – Every, what, three minutes another plane goes over? Which is fine. I don't mind planes. It's not like we're trying to record anything. But uh, <laughs> every three minutes or less, actually. A lot of times you'll get three planes per minute. You can look. Uh, it's interesting because we're basically directly south from where I work, which is next to the airport. And uh, as I drive, I can look down to the south where my house is, and I can see like five or ten planes just headed that direction it took me a while you know I'm, I'm just dumb like that and i always look and think oh look at the the stars are coming out wait they're moving um but yeah i eventually figured out that that's all the planes headed my way mm. uh, we're not really up that high because you can see the cars driving below us and they like you can see 
what kind of car it is and and uh you know, if they're pulling into somebody's driveway you can see the garage door go up and all that stuff but it feels like we're really really high and as we were coming up you could hear the crickets coming out and i thought that there were coyotes i now i don't hear them but well. i know that there used to be coyotes all the time and you could actually hear them while we were doing steefing and that was so long ago although it doesn't feel long ago but when we first started the show this town was a third or smaller <laughs> the size that it is now i mean the, the town when you moved in was brand new it, yeah. it was started in like 2004 or something like that right pretty much and yeah. that's when i moved in oh okay so you, it was just a couple of years after the town was founded and now it's i don't know if, if yeah. to, this is several times bigger than the town i grew up in already and it's only a decade old when we came up here the last time i'd be willing to say that majority of those houses that are on the other side of that road were not there, didn't exist. Now it's almost like a, a a town as big as what you grew up in has sprung up in that amount of time. Yes. It's kind of amazing. I mean, to me, it feels like progress. And, and to somebody like my dad, you're just like, oh, you know, there goes the neighborhood kind of thing. But, you know, he chose a, a place where he wanted to live. He was born in that little town of less than a 1,000 people. And he talks about what it was like in the 50s and, and you know that, that it was sort of a booming town and there were restaurants and there was a movie theater and stuff but at some point I, you know probably 1960 or so um, people started to move away and it just got smaller and, and, and it's 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 just a place where old people live now you know or farmers and he loves that he loves that there are no neighbors uh, in one direction uh, as you know literally no neighbors you just would drive in that direction if you could. There's no roads. Uh, and eventually you'd hit a mountain. But there, there are absolutely no people. And, and you know, that's kind of a neat place to grow up. I mean, it was lonely in a way. But it was neat that you could, you know, sleep out on the trampoline and look at the stars or, you know, catch crickets and snakes and stuff in the backyard and things like that. But, um, but you know, I would watch the suburbs on TV. I would see something like Poltergeist and E.T. and long to live there. It's a place where there's five or six people just right on your street that are your age or whatever that you could be friends with and you could go to your neighbor's house and all that stuff. It just that was alien to me that we didn't have uh, you know houses that sprang up that were identical to the ones next to them and close enough that you all shared a, a street at, or a driveway or any of that stuff. It was just a it was out in the country isolated and, and there was no reason to build close um, and so, you know, you're about to experience that. You've got a new house. Well, to me, it's new. Uh, and you said that there's still one vacant lot next door. But when that goes up and somebody lives there, then you will, you'll, you won't be alone any longer. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I mean, it's nice to have the empty lot because, like, for example, this whole last week, we've been putting in a um, flagstone patio in our backyard. I'm sorry. What would your wife call it? Oh, yeah. She would call it a flagstone oh. patio. For those of you, uh, for, for our Canadian listeners, that's what I'm talking about. It's it's a patio made of flagstones. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, we've... How does she still have that accent? I don't understand. She has lived half her life away. And yet, well. She doesn't really. The funny thing is she actually mispronounces bagels because of that. <laughs> she has always said bagels. But now she tries to say bagel because she thinks that bagel is the wrong way to say it because, because bag, it rhymes with flag. Bag is how, what she would refer to a, a sack as, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and that's wrong. And so, yeah, it, it's only logical that you would think, well, bagel has to be wrong too. Yeah, so people give her crap. It's funny because I was watching an episode of Community, and this that was the joke that they had was that Britta said bagel instead of bagel and everybody laughed at her and made fun of her because she said bagel wrong and i said <laughs> right after i saw that i went upstairs and i was like okay honey come here and watch this episode of community with me you're gonna really enjoy it and did she don't leave us in suspense oh she did yeah it's the episode where uh, jeff winger plays pool naked so you know uh, there's no way a woman wouldn't enjoy that but anyways <laughs> uh I was oh yeah flagstones. Um, so we made this porch, and we had all sorts of 
environmental waste, you could call it, I guess. I don't know, you know, dirt and stuff like that that needed to go elsewhere. And it's so handy when you have an empty lot next door. You just push the wheelbarrow over there and dump it. And um, Now, wait, you're allowed to do that? Or it's just there was nobody to tell you no? Well, there's nobody to tell me no. I, 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 it's just dirt. And it's so, A, it's not dumping, like, real waste, which you would, I would assume, get in trouble for. Um, and when they build a house there, they're just going to dig a big hole and put in a basement and... You know, they won't know the difference. So, yeah, I mean, anytime we're gardening or any of that, we got rocks. We just chuck them over into the uh, the empty lot. And uh, eventually that's going to go away. Hopefully we'll be mostly done improving our backyard by then. We won't need a, a dumping ground for our rocks and weeds and stuff. But uh, for now it's really handy. At the rate you're going, you'd best hope that no neighbors move in for about three years. Yeah, I, I to tell you the truth, I expect that may be the case. I haven't seen any movement on that lot at all. Although somebody did complain about how bad the weeds got and they, you know, called whoever it is that owns it and they sent somebody out to uh, take care of them, which turned out to backfire on us because uh, he burned all the weeds and made the freaking house stink like a campfire. Um... But, you know, that's that's the only... I mean, they put a sign up that says, Lot for sale. Build a house here. Uh, but I don't know that there's a lot of people looking for custom, you know, one one little lot kind of things right now where we've got, you know, in, in the town, since, as we've mentioned, it's growing like crazy. So there's home building companies, building suburbs, you know, little uh, subdivisions everywhere. And uh, you don't need to buy a lot and build your own because, you know, there's dozens of houses to choose from. So I have a feeling it may be a while. But, you know, I'm down with that. Um, yeah. So what are we talking about up here? Anything? Just rambling? Just a conversation between two dudes? I don't know. We had a couple of possible topics for tonight. But we expended so much energy getting up the hill. <laughs> Uh, it, <sighs> I think it would be better to save those topics for a better atmosphere that may not include wind loud enough to make this unusable. So uh, we can save that. And, and if it turns out that this podcast is completely uh, worthless and you can't hear crap, then, you know, we can just not use it. And that will be fine. And the subject we wanted to talk about will still exist in another way. We've only ever thrown away one episode of That Gets My Goat so far. Um, there's still one that's not aired that I intend for us to air that we recorded on that long drive to Las Vegas for the new Media Expo last year. Um, but we tend to get together to eat. We used to do it almost every week, and then we'd go out and record like a little that gets my goat and call it good. It's really rare that we come back to your house and set up the microphones and go through all that to do a show uh, just – it seems like so much more work than it used to be and our ambition has shrunk kind of like you know on a cold day in the water and and i <sighs> hey i was in the pool <laughs> right uh and uh <laughs> and yeah I, I there was a an episode that we recorded and it was all about it was a behind the scenes episode and, and it was all about um how we conceived of this thing that we, it was a recurring gag that we did on the Dune Steve and I don't know why I didn't end up editing that there was like some movie or something that came out and so that took priority and we edited that and put that out f first and then there was something else maybe summer started and once summer started there's lots of movies and we had several episodes that we were banking and by the time things cleared up it was like well it's been six months is anybody going to care and now it's probably been three or four years and uh, who is it that always brings it up? Gino Moretto always brings up that the only time he didn't enjoy the Dune Steve was the episodes where I got voted off the show and uh, I was no longer on it. And and uh, and that's what we made that that gets my goat about was just, the, you know, coming up with how we did that and why we did it and, and all that. And I thought about it just the other day. I, I saw the file and I thought, oh, you know what? What? I should just air this. And not have any, oh, guys, I'm sorry, this is five years later, three years later, whatever. Just air it and see what people say. 
no explanation whatsoever. Just here's a five years old episode. Enjoy. And we're not going to tell you it's five years old either. You just have to be completely confused. That's the thing. Half of the people that listen to the show now probably never heard those episodes and don't even know what you're talking about. No, but see, that's kind of neat, though, that we have new listeners. And they can always go back and catch up if they want to. I, I've seen people post and say, you know, I'm a new listener. What episodes should I uh, listen to? What episodes should I avoid? Yes, that's that's more likely. Uh, what are, what is this episode that I always refer back to? And what is that cat's episode that uh, uh, will make me want to kill you? And uh, yes, <laughs> um, but it's always neat when you find out there's somebody that's new and that didn't know us. And I, as I'm trying to remember, somebody posted recently. There's like, well, you know, I've only listened to the last five or six episodes, and I don't know if this is just your shtick, but and, I, and he mentioned something that we do in every single episode. And, and he's like, yeah, if you do that every episode, that's going to get kind of old. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, but, I, oh, the point I was trying to make is it's neat that we've got new uh, listeners. Uh, I went on to Facebook today because today was my day off. And, uh, you know, so I, I was trying to catch up and see what people were saying. And, and I saw that there were like over 400 likes on the Dune Steve page. And I thought, wow, that's – wait, that's terrible. <laughs> We, we've had that Facebook page for five or six years, and we have a heck of a lot more than 400 listeners, and we only got 400 likes? And now, I'm not one of those people that cares about likes. Likes don't mean anything. They don't. But still, it's just weird because it means that we're not um, utilizing social media as well as we need to. You know what I mean? We're always like, well, so-and-so has... 700,000 uh, Twitter followers. Is that what they call them? Twitter followers? Yeah. And, uh, you know, like Vin Diesel has over 13 million pubic hairs. And, and you're just like, well, okay. Uh, oh, sorry, Twitter followers. And, uh, you know, for us to just have that few means, oh, maybe I haven't been saying go on to Facebook and like us. But it doesn't mean anything if somebody likes. You know? Liking... A uh, thing like the Dune Steve is like being friends with it, though, um, which is different than a regular like, where you just say something and somebody says, "Oh, like," and then yeah, it doesn't mean anything. It's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> I saw that episode of Community a little while ago where it was the blanket fort, <laughs> and they have the bit where uh, uh, Abed says something, and you know, it's a, the poignant thing of the general or whatever and it's like blah 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 and then it says facebook status update and <laughs> and then all of a sudden leonard picture appears and it says leonard likes this post and then it goes to commercial <laughs> I, I remember absolutely laughing out loud when i saw that the first time around and doing it again the second time because it had been so long that i'd forgotten it leonard, but um, leonard had like a youtube page <laughs> that was just about Reviewing microwave pizza or something like that. Yep. <laughs> it was lame. They, they talked about how stupid that was, and he goes, you're still talking about it. <laughs> and it's always, shut up, Leonard. That was the joke on Leonard. Yeah. The, Leonard would say something, and then everybody would say, shut up, Leonard. I heard about this, or I saw this. And so, yeah, he says something, and she really says, shut up, Leonard. I found your page on YouTube. What's the point of reviewing frozen pizzas? And he says... You're talking about it. <laughs> she goes, oh, that is true. <laughs> so, oh, no. uh, and, yeah. and I remember the end credit sequence showed one of his YouTube videos about pizza. And uh, I don't know. I, the, the, the new season of Community is so weak, except the end credit sequences of each episode are the best part of the show. And, uh, yeah, I can't completely hate on the sixth season of uh, Community because of those little... because Well, you still haven't seen it, right? Oh. I haven't. No, I haven't seen any of the six. I'm trying to get to it. I started on season one, like in November or so, and I've been working my way through it, and I am now almost done with season four. There are two episodes left of season four, which was a really short... It was a 13-episode season only. And, uh, yeah, it, and that's the one season without Dan Harmon. Um, oh, you watched it? I yeah, I've, I've almost watched the whole thing, and uh, I think I made it through three, 
before I, I said, nope, the show is dead. I wish that I had, you know, watched, I wish I had quit on the series finale, which is, you know, when they graduate and stuff like that, not knowing that there would be three more seasons after the series finale. But, um, here's a little thing. You've had a blog, a big ankle of itch, uh, at blogspot.com probably for eight years, maybe less. A little less than that. Well, you you pressured me into going. starting it like a year after the Dune Steve started, I think. Anyway, you've had this blog for, let's say, six years. And uh, you, you, you post on it every once in a while. But there, it's rare that you have anything that you care enough about to really blog about it. I, and that's, you know, for your big Anklevich one. Because, you know, you got kids and you're like, oh, little Jamie is so cute. And you would do those posts. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm excluding that. But for some reason, you had a massive community uh, <laughs> blog the other day where it's just like, I'm going to talk about the history of community. And if you haven't seen it, here's like my favorite clips. And these were my favorite episodes. And oh, then it got really good. And then it got not so good. And now it's good again. And I've been watching and it just went on and on. I was really surprised because it's, it's rare. And please don't take this. Well, you can take it however you want. Uh, badly. Uh, it's rare to see you become that passionate about something where it's just like, I'm going to dedicate three shifts to doing this blog or whatever, you know what I mean? Because that's what it would take to do what you did with embedding clips and going out and finding things and saying, oh, you know, here's the Beetlejuice gag. And it took three seasons to get to the punchline. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. There, there was a guy that I work with who was also just out of the blue. See, I was sitting there one day. And I hear him going over and talking to somebody, and he's like, oh, that is streets ahead. And I was like, <laughs> what the? And I s stood right up and stuck my head out my door and said, "Who? whoa. And I had to go and talk to him. And, and yeah, after that, like, I would go and see him each day because I'd already go and talk to this guy every day for, you know, work anyways. And then I would go and talk to him. And then when I finished the work stuff, and then I'd be like, oh, okay, I watched this episode and this episode and all, oh, and this happened. And it was so funny. And then he'd tell me about stuff from season four. Um, with his hat, with his hat in his head, hands or hat, hat in his hands. You mean his head in his hands. He would tell you about season four with his hat in his hands. Wait, did he not like season four? Like, no, he didn't like it either. Yeah. He's just like, man, he was telling me that, like, when they got to the the last bit, he's like, man, what is going on? Is this season almost over? Can we get on to the season where Dan Harmon is back? Because, but yeah, I don't know. It was it was really interesting. He was the one that told me about the Beetlejuice thing. Apparently, like, almost nobody got that. You How know, could it, you? It, yeah, it happened over three seasons. And after it, it happened, when they said Beetlejuice the third time and Beetlejuice walked by in the background... Dan Harmon like tweeted this out. He went through and assembled this clip and said, "Come on, didn't anybody get this?" And he tweeted it out. And hey, everybody's hey, there, like, "Oh wow, there is no way anybody got it." But it reminds me, and I'm sorry, we can cut this out and put it at the end of the episode. Except for I'm too lazy; it's going to be right here. Uh, there was a show called Fringe that was on Fox, and in the first season, on let's say like episode 13 or 14, there's this character that shows up that's like the observer. And he reveals that he's been watching them in, have their little adventures and observing and not interfering. And, uh, you know, and so he's like, oh, do you remember when you did this? And, and it was referring back to like episode three or seven or whatever. And he's like, I was there. And uh, they're all just like, oh, okay. And he's like, well, if I wasn't, then how would I know this? And he gives them this, this information. And immediately somebody on YouTube said, oh, my God. He went back. And this guy had been in those scenes as an extra. And either they planned this way, way ahead, or they saw this unusual extra that had been in seven episodes or whatever and said, let's do a whole thing because this guy's so weird looking. Let's do a whole thing with him and we'll make him a regular character on the show. Anyway, when I saw that, I was just like, holy crap, this is maybe the greatest show ever made. How? <laughs> how oh, now I want to go back. And so... Like, yeah, we go back and we look for him in the episode because he's like, oh, if you watch hard enough, he's a Waldo type thing. You know, he's in every single episode. It's like finding Orko in the old He-Man cartoons. <laughs> those were I think those were only in the She-Ra spinoffs. And that really <laughs> makes me sad that you watched She-Ra because it was not as good as He-Man, which was not as good as anything. Uh, but, yeah, that, you know, that's funny. Um, when you can do stuff like that and plan, you know – Speaking of that, and then back to community, 
which I, I I'm real. I don't know why, but it, since I started watching it again, it reminded me just how much I absolutely loved that show. And uh, there, I recommend. Like, I mean, I had to do that blog post because I just I loved it, and it's one of those shows that got no love. Nobody really cared about it very much. It had really low ratings. It's amazing that it made it past season three um, and on through weird stuff like losing the creator for a year, then getting him back and having another, you know, it's just amazing. And now it's been canceled by NBC and picked up by Yahoo, which who even knew that Yahoo screen existed? Much less that they were going to save community for another season. Um, But yeah, there was uh, an episode. They have uh, the character of Abed who likes to do a lot of pop culture kind of things. Um, And unfortunately in season four, they kind of lost track of how Abed works. And instead of Abed doing things uh cleverly he would just be like oh i need to do this trope and he would announce it at the start of every episode and then he would do it which was kind of uh lame but in one episode he meets jeff winger in a nice restaurant and uh jeff is trying to get him because it's his birthday and jeff's trying to get him to go to this other restaurant where they have a pulp fiction party planned for him and everybody's dressed up pierce is wearing the gimp costume and (laughs) chang is dressed like bruce willis the boxer etc etc shirley is dressed like samuel l jackson which is awesome she's got the the fro and she's even got like the sideburns going on and everything which is pretty sweet but anyways instead he's doing this thing there and he tells jeff this story about how he started a blog about cougar town (laughs) he just did it for fun but you know he did it was such a great blog and it did so well for uh the people that made the show that they invited him to the set and they made him an extra on cougar town and then he had this epiphany when he was an extra on cougar town that he needed to be a grown-up guy and so he was trying to have this grown-up dinner with jeff winger turns out he was actually just doing a reenactment of my dinner with andre and um, he kind of tricks Jeff into believing that they're having a grown-up conversation. But the weird thing is, while I was making that blog post about community, I was looking at just various cool things like that. And that was one of the things that somebody had posted on their own little post, was that apparently Abed really was an extra on Cougar Town. And they had the, a clip from it where he's in the background sitting there as these two characters talk. And then he gets up and runs out. And I couldn't tell if it was legit or not because I know I don't know anything about Cougar Town. I don't know one character. I do know that What's-Her-Face from Friends is on it. And that's Courtney all Cox. I know. Yeah, Courtney Cox is on and That's That's the entirety of my knowledge of Cougar Town. But, uh, but yeah, I almost posted that too. And apparently the same characters that were in the show in the scene that he was the extra in front of or behind you know he was back in the background and these two characters were talking then in an episode of community they were extras where <laughs> where they were having a paintball the paintball episode all of a sudden you see them there and just in a shot going hey so i don't know i think that's really cool that kind of stuff is neat um <laughs> and yeah that's the similar kind of thing like your watcher you told me, okay, this is a similar thing from Community. There was an episode where Abed didn't have much to do. It was all about other things. Um, but he was in all of the scenes with the other characters in the deep background, and he had his own subplot that you only caught if you watched the background and didn't watch what was going on in the foreground. And then at the very end of the episode, he's like, oh, Abed, where have you been this ep- This whole? I, it seems like we haven't seen you this week. And he's like, I've been around. It's like, what have you been doing? Not much. And then, like, the next episode or two episodes later, they referred back to what he was doing on that. And they're like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't remember that. And he's like, no, it happened, like, two weeks ago. And that's one of those things where it's just like, that would reward you for going back and rewatching. The same way that on Fringe, if you went and you saw The Observer again, you'd be like, look, look, there he is! Um, 
the same thing. It's like, and, and somebody had edited together all those clips to show Abed's story from that episode. And you had posted that on your blog. And it's just one of those things that really makes you appreciate the show. Because, you know, I, I've worked in television before. And television is so much better than film as far as not being boring and just sitting around and doing 150 ta- takes and all that stuff. But it's still boring to be around a movie getting made or, 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 you know, something being filmed because it takes so long to do setups. It takes so long to do lighting. Okay, let's turn the camera around, you know, and, and, and so they send people back and like an hour and a half later, you pick up exactly where you left off or probably before where you left off to, you know, to get another angle and all that. So it's so boring. Uh, and, you know, if you're one of the guys, even if you're a director and you're working a 15 hour day or whatever, it's still mostly just sitting around waiting for other people to get their makeup on or, you know, the lighting or it's like, okay, we've got to get the stand-ins back in here. And we'll say, okay, we'll see you guys. Well, you go to back to your trailers. And so to see that the executive producer was like, let's do all, let's have all sorts of fun in the background <laughs> while we're waiting you know, it's like to, to create layers and stuff that was only entertaining to them or would only be entertaining if you were in on the joke or watched it again and again and again until you became in on the joke. So, so the, like the Beetlejuice thing blows my mind <laughs> that w- one time in the first season, one of the characters says Beetlejuice. And the second time, a year later, somebody says Beetlejuice. And then the third time somebody says, oh, you know, it's like we watched Beetlejuice. And a man dressed as Beetlejuice walks past in the background. No attention is, is drawn to it or whatever. But it's like the joke is if you say his name three times, he appears. Dude, that, I mean, that's just weird. I mean, how does something like that happen? And you may know. But my guess is somebody observed that they had said Beetlejuice twice. And if we do Beetlejuice one more time... You know, it's like, hey, we've said it three times. And they're like, okay, so let's dress up an actor as Beetlejuice. I mean, just, I don't know how something like that happens, but I love them for it. It makes me want to go back and rewatch um, Community from the beginning. After I read your blog, you know, first, you know, after I, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I have no idea what I did. I, I, it was so damned long. The, the point is, insert your own joke here because the blog was so long. It took me so long to read that I had, you know, like my, my email box was all full. I, I had, you know, I, I had to go explain why I had not shown up for work in a week. You know, it's like, okay, I, did, I had to change my depends. You know, one, something like that. You fill in your own joke. It's much better than mine. Uh, I, I was like, oh, oh, my gosh, I'm going on to Netflix and I'm just going to start with the first episode of Community and I'm just going to watch them all and to hell with work and to hell with defecation and all that stuff. Uh, and it's no longer on Netflix. No, you got to get it from Hulu. Uh, and yeah, Hulu effed me over, too, because it's like, well, we got three episodes that you can watch for free over at Yahoo. It's like, well, yeah, but A, those aren't very good. And two, I want to watch it from the beginning. Uh, anyhow, so I, I wasn't able to do that. If I had been a real man... I would have just uh, gone to one of the myriad sites where you can apparently steal anything you want on the internet. But I don't know where those are. I've not heard of those sites. Those exist? You can steal things on the internet? Apparently that's how you're supposed to watch Game of Thrones. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, But yeah, you know, the funny thing about that episode with Abed in the background giving, uh, helping the woman give birth to the baby is that that friend I was talking about who who said Streets Ahead <laughs> told me about this. He told me about how there was the episode where Abed in the background helped someone give birth. And I was like, oh, I haven't, I haven't seen it. And he says, you know, somebody says, yeah, what, well, what have you been doing? He's like, oh, I, I helped somebody give birth a, a few weeks ago. And they're like, what? Where was I? How did I miss, you know, that it was coming. I knew it was coming. And then the episode happened. I was walking on the treadmill and I watched the episode and I saw none of it. <laughs> I missed the entire thing and then it got to the end and Shirley says, oh, where have you been? We haven't seen you much today. And so I've been around and I thought, oh, damn it. This is that episode. And I wound up staying on the treadmill an extra like 20 minutes, rewinding the episode back and playing it through and like... Fast forward until I got to the scenes where I could see things happening in the background and then watching them as I went through the whole thing. And an interesting thing is while I was looking up 
clips to to show that apparently somebody uh says that these you you see these same two there's there's a mother and the father of the baby the boyfriend um you see them in the background like start making out or something in the halloween episode apparently and so that's where this baby came from which is also supposedly when shirley's baby was uh created as well so yeah i don't know it's interesting stuff it's really fun when they put little nuggets like that in there for you to find later um and i you know there's there's more some things especially in season four they've just overdone uh they've kind of done them into the ground like i really enjoyed the use of that song that uh, i posted where they at first you know they're just singing it and then you just hear them humming it here and there uh just for fun but yeah when season four comes they bring it much more to the forefront until it gets to the point where on the episode where they're all puppets i don't know if you've heard of that one or seen it but they have an episode where they're all puppets and uh the post you know the end credit sequence all the puppets sing that song do like a little rap a little bobby mcferrin uh, version of it a mouth noise thing you hear about that sort of stuff or you pick up on that sort of stuff that riv that what's the word it rewards the the observant viewer it rewards the uh, constant reader kind of thing and you it makes me i'm not going to speak for you it makes me uh want to be creative like that it makes me want to work harder and you know do things like that and we have our own show and it's not like community or it's not like a, you know even a skate pod or something like that where millions of people know about it but there are a few people out there that listen every single week or episode i wish it were every week <laughs> um and when you hear about that you know there have been a couple people that have Okay, there have been a couple people that say, a few guys, you're no good anymore, or you never were. But there, at the same time, there have been a few guys that are just like, oh, gosh, I, I wish you guys could do more show. I wish you guys could know how much fun it is to listen to the show and how excited I get when there are new episodes. And dang, man, if, if that doesn't affect me, if that doesn't make me wish that I could work a little harder or wish I had a little more ambition or that the, the show were higher in my priority list – who was it? There was somebody I was talking to just the other day about how much work you used to put into this show when it first started because you did the heavy lifting yourself. And what it required of you was all my free time. Yeah, I was going to say 100%. But, it was, you know, it was 90% of the, your, the time you weren't sleeping or working or with your family, it's just like, okay, I can't watch TV, I can't write, I can't read, I can't exercise or anything like that because I have to get this new episode of The Dune Steve out and it takes that much effort. And this was even before we had discovered that you could do a soundscape and spend three hours for every two minutes of finished uh, audio. And so I was telling them about how much work you used to put into it and that eventually you had another kid or nine and, you know, you got fatter and older and suddenly, you know, you instead of two kids in school, you have three and a half kids in school and they're all clamoring for your attention and, and your wife gets a new shift. And so you see your 45 minutes of every 24 hours and all that stuff and you could no longer do it. And to invest the amount of time that you did in 2008, you would have to be a homeless person <laughs> and all that. And it's just like, I wish that we could do that look i wish that you were homeless <laughs> well i mean you were telling me about your financial situation before we started recording you're closed <laughs> um but I, I i feel bad when i hear people say that they love the show and it, it should be the opposite of that i should feel good but i feel guilty because i want you know it's like really you love the show oh, gosh well i can work harder i can put out more you know what i mean yeah and so I try, I try to get it all done and to get, get things. And there was an episode, the last time you and I came to your house, we recorded this story, which is an ambitious one. And I almost never do ambitious stuff anymore because it's work. Uh, and it's been like five weeks since we recorded that or longer. And, uh, 
just today I finally started emailing people their parts and saying, hey, will you do this? Will you do this character and all that for that thing? And at this rate, it'll be, you know, mid-2016 by the time anybody hears that. And it's just like, oh, shoot, man, I, I, I can work harder. I can do better. Anyway, the, the community thing made me think of, of the, wow, we have a creative outlet and we could do fun stuff and we could do callbacks to old songs and jokes. And I don't know. It's hard enough <laughs> for us to just get in the same room. And we, I was talking to you the other day of what if we did like a Skype call where you and, and I and then anybody who likes the show that has a, a microphone can call in. And we'll just do like a big space opera story with a bunch of characters and we'll just record it like live and then have everybody send me their audio and we'll be able to edit it together with minimal work because it's all recorded. It's all recorded at the same time and we know that the performance that we wanted, we got because we could always say, oh, hey, Marshall, can you do that over again? You said, oh, I'm going to post on Facebook and see if anybody's interested in that. And so many people said, oh, I would do that. That's so cool. Yeah. That it made me feel bad because I was like, "What if we ne- well, what if we never do that?" <laughs> we need to, yeah. We've got the story and uh, the plan. We just need to uh, take a minute and highlight it all. And I think the biggest, the biggest hurdle for that whole idea is figuring out a time that every single person, because there are people. There was, there, uh, I think, Gino in New Zealand wanted to be a part of it, and. Somebody in Britain. Yeah, Catherine Inskip, uh, who was our, our British woman from uh, In the Gloaming. She also wanted to be a part of it. And yeah, so so trying to coordinate a time where someone in Britain, someone in New Zealand, and a bunch of people in America can all get together live, that seems daunting. Maybe... On a Saturday, we could figure out a time where, you know, maybe Gino would be willing to be up in the middle of the night. Because on Saturday is actually Sunday there, etc. I don't know. And I think that's going to be the most daunting part. But, um... Well, we'll just have to do it once. And anybody who can't do it can try and do it the next time. We'll just see how difficult it is. Because if it's horrible... And we're like, oh, well, let's just have everybody record their lines separately next time and send it in. Because, you know, it, uh, we did do an episode of Delusions of Grandeur recently with with uh, Gino. And for me, it was 1130 at night on a Thursday. And for Gino, it was about 5 o'clock p.m. on a Friday. <laughs> and that may be wrong, but that's what it seems like. And... Marshall was like, you know, an hour later. I think if it was 1130, it was either 530 or 430 for him and definitely not five o'clock. Okay. I think that the minutes are the same everywhere. (laughs) All right. I could have actually made that funny, but I didn't do it intentionally. And so basically Gino just let us take his Saturday afternoon or Friday afternoon. take, Take some big chunk of his life away. Um. And, you know, he like his children were banging on the door and they're like, Daddy, Daddy, what is going on? I, I, they, they, his, his children spoke in a strange Chinese that dialect. The worst accent and ever. They're like, Daddy, are you, you're not having breathing in there anymore, Daddy. And I, he, oh, they, these were adorable little voices, children, because they had this really cool, like, uh, I, I don't want to say it was a New Zealand accent, but, you know, they're from New Zealand. So, hey. But, yeah, I understood that it was this tremendous sacrifice for Gino to do that, and uh, it was really cool. But, yeah, to get, like, 17 people and do that, whoa, holy cow. But, yeah, what we just need to do is is set a time, and those that can do it, do it. And then the next time we'll set a different kind of time, or we'll do it in our afternoon instead of late at night or whatever, and maybe new people would be able to do it. Yeah, but that's it's probably a good idea. But I it's just works. hard because... Uh, you, you know, your wife works late, late, late at, at night, and then you have a child, and he likes to cry whenever we podcast. And He's probably crying right now. Luckily, we're not there. No, we're on a hill, even if even if we wanted to help him. Wait, well, that sounds kind of mean. We couldn't. We would have to jump off this cliff. There, we're on the edge of a cliff that's probably a 15 to 20 foot drop, which... Uh... Is a quick way back down to the bottom. Yeah, but it's rocks. So the f- 15 <laughs> to 20 foot doesn't seem like a lot. But if you landed on that rock, uh, it would feel like a lot. Anyway, I, I don't know how we got on this. Oh, oh, okay. Just the creativity 
We have our own show. I'd like to do better, but it's unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> I, anyway, it's, just, it's you and I. We always get together and we talk about writing. And the last episode that aired, we talked about we're gonna. This is the year we're gonna write a novel, and the amount of dedication that it takes to write a novel is similar to what we did in two thousand eight on the Dune Steve. <laughs> and so it's like, wow, okay. Well, we either we're gonna do a novel or we're gonna be good parents. <laughs> um. You know, it's something like that where it's just like, well, okay, well, something is going to have to go if we're going to do this big thing. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's one of those things. I, I Shoot, you know, there's so many people that have their own show that's that's really much more frequent than the Dune Steve. You know, like Marshall puts out these damn journey intos like, like he's given them away. Uh, and Graham uh, Dunlop, Graham, Graham. Uh, he just got promoted to doing uh, Podcastle. He beat the crap out of the Podcastle Enforcer, and now he's doing Podcastle. Now he's enforcing. And those guys do a show every week. Now, granted, you know, they, they have somebody else read the story and all that stuff. But still, every week they do something, and it's just, yeah, that sort of stuff is amazing. It makes me want to work harder, but, you know, I've got to be realistic. I can't. Well, you talked about wanting to do your creative outlet to be able to do something awesome like... The Watcher, the Observer, yeah. where he's there in the background. He's been planned ahead for. He was there in episode 7 and didn't actually appear until episode 13. You know, that kind of stuff. But you can do that in other ways, too. I mean, you have things already that are like that. I mean, you have a series of stories that are about, you know, certain characters they they're they're based i mean they're loosely based just around a town that they happen in and here and there you'll refer to other stories it's like stephen king's thing where you know stuff happens in castle rock and they'll be like oh yeah and when this happened and it'll be you know they'll refer back to it or they'll refer back to cujo or something and it, this is apparently all happening every one of these it's like the Marvel Universe, you know, how can all these things exist in the same universe? But apparently they do. There's super science as well as magic as well as everything else going on. And yeah, no, that all works. They just use it as though it all goes together. But yeah, I mean, you've done that with stories and doing that with books. You could do the same kind of thing if you plan. You know, we were at that, uh, that convention a little while ago. Uh, where they were doing an author panel, and one of the authors uh, asked one of the other authors, oh, hey, this thing that happened in your book, this last one that you had, book 12 in the series, or whatever it was, how long ago did you pl did you know that this was going to happen? And he says, oh, I knew that from book one. Yeah, I, that, was, that was a plan that I had always. And, he's, and the other guy's like, oh, that is so awesome. That's just great. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's something you can do. You can you can plan those kind of things uh, in your right. You have more than one creative outlet is the one of the best things about the Dune, Steve, is not only do you have the show where you can just sit and talk and jabber and have fun and enjoy yourself, you also have the writing, which is part of the show. Um, so it's kind of the two worlds colliding. It's like one of those little diagrams where they have the two circles and then they show the little is that a vin diagram is that what that's called it that sounds right to me but i i have no idea oh, okay. <laughs> and we're up on the middle of, you know we're, we're we're just up on a hill so i can't double check it but uh but yeah it's like those you know you have writing and you have podcasting and then there's that spot where they intersect where your writing is on the podcast and you know if you want to share this story that story and that story and people can be like oh my gosh no way Oh my gosh, really? Dallas Girk? You mentioned him in this story and then he appears in this story too? Oh, that's so crazy. You know, that kind of thing can happen if you want it to. Um, there's a helicopter flying by now. That's not part of the airport. You know, uh, not only is the airport just right up, right past us, but also the uh, National Guard base is right over there too. So we do get a lot of Black Hawk helicopters and, and the like flying overhead. So that's what we got here, I think. But anyways, I don't know. I think that's something that's really awesome. Um, and it's something that we can take advantage of with the time that we have. Maybe we don't have tons. But, you know, I'm going to be positive. 
despite the fact that I said I, <laughs> I said on my own podcast that I was going to write so much this month and I was going to make it rad and I was going to report on all the writing. And it's been two weeks and I've gotten like 200 words in all that time. Uh, most of it was because I got worked into the ground last week like a freaking donkey. And, you know, somebody with a whip. They didn't even bother with the carrot. It was just all stick. Yeah, your boss is a real taskmaster, man. I don't know how you sleep with her at night. Yeah, it was rough. I was so oh, tired. Nice. <laughs> That's true. I was so tired at the end of every day. I'd just be like, huh. Hmm writing uh, that's a that's a pipe dream that i'll uh, i i won't even consider it right now i can't even lift my head um so hopefully now that that's over for the time being uh i can get get back to it and get some writing in because i would really like to um and yeah i don't know i i think it's it's fun i've yet to come up with an idea for a series where you could work in, you could have the, the, this guy turns into the bad guy and have that planned out from book one, not have it happen until book 12 or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure there will come a time when I have something like that. That's one of those things. It seems like series just kind of sprout, uh, from authors when they write something that's successful, then all of a sudden, oh crap. Well, I guess I better make a sequel because that's what they want. And then all of a sudden they have a series. So maybe that's uh, one of those things you got to just plan ahead for every story you have. Well, you were asking me yesterday, I want to say you texted me. Maybe it was the day before, I can't remember, because all those days have blurred together in my mind now into one long, arduous, awful day. But uh, you texted me and asked me if I'd come up with any ideas for us to do as a collaboration, because at some point... We said we wanted to collaborate on something again, like we did with Last Contact a while ago. We suge I, I suggested that maybe we ought to do another episode of That Gets My Goat, where we just sit around and shoot off ideas and try and come up with something that we could uh, work together on. So maybe that's an episode that we'll have coming down the line here pretty soon. I think... We're probably going to have to cut this episode off here pretty soon because um, it's probably about time we go back to the house. That's and fine. We've been recording a long time. We got our exercise and we got an episode in. I'm not sure if it was entertaining to anybody, but eh, I mean, it's no worse than what we usually do. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, so I guess we've come to the end of our episode today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say goodbye to y'all from the top of the blave uh i'm big anklevich yeah and, and uh, there is nothing finer wait is it finer except for an mlt sandwich a mutton lettuce and tomato sandwich where the mutton is nice and lean the tomato is good and fresh but that's not what he said <laughs> he clearly said i'm rich outfield good night see ya oh it wasn't recording hey that ain't funny man that gives my goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Making Richard a national treasure, man.